Hello, and welcome to another video on data analysis expressions. My name is Mitchell Pearson, and if you like what you see in this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be notified. In this video, just real quick, I wanna take a look at five things you can do to write cleaner DAX. Now, although I do say cleaner DAX, obviously that also transitions into possibly writing better DAX. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we progress through this class. Now, the inspiration behind this video is that I do a lot of training on DAX, a lot of boot camps, a lot of one-on-one -on -one training. One of my jobs is actually doing kind of one-on-one -on -one virtual mentoring where somebody has a problem, they call us up, they purchase a couple hours and I work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And whether that's diagnosing a problem they already have and rewriting some DAX or writing new DAX, I've noticed there's this problem with really formatting of code and writing clean DAX that's understandable, that's readable, that's maintainable, that's the transfer of knowledge is easy, right? Because they're looking at their code and they're like, oh, I don't really remember why I wrote it this way. And I'm like, well, I don't either. Let's kind of clean this up. And so cleaning up your code and writing good clean code has a lot of benefits. Once again, understandability, readability, transferring that to somebody else, maintainability, all of those are huge, huge benefits. And so in this example that I have open in Power BI Desktop, I have a measure right here that we're gonna take a look at. And this measure is prior year profit. So it's profit for the prior year for the United States. And this is a simple measure, just a couple lines of code. It's not a very complex measure, but I've obviously made it not very clean. And we're gonna clean this up by walking through those five tips. Um, and let me just say, again, this is a very simple measure. So there's gonna be DAX calculations that you write that are many more lines of code than this. And if you don't format it, it's gonna be a lot even more difficult to really read and understand. So this first thing that you see here is I'm calculating the sum of sales amount minus profit or minus product cost, which gives me my profit for the last year for the United States. Now I wanna clean this up. I wanna make this super easy readable for anybody, anybody who opens this up. I want them to be able to look at it and say, oh, I know exactly what that's doing. So the first thing that I recommend, right? When we're talking about writing better code, writing cleaner code, the first thing that I recommend here is actually commenting out your code. Put in comments, put in explanations, put in descriptions, what's going on with this measure. I've noticed that coming from a programming background myself, I've noticed that in DAX, most DAX developers don't actually comment out their code. And I think, not sure, I think the reason for that is because a lot of them don't come from the programming background. They probably don't even, most people aren't even familiar, you can comment out code. And I've seen that in a lot of my classes when we talk about this. And so right here, the first tip that I have, right, tip number one is comment your code. Now you can comment your code by using control, there we go, plus forward slash, watch this. If I come down here and I do control forward slash, it'll comment out that full line of code. If I do control forward slash again, it uncomments it. You could also use a shortcut of just put in two forward slashes like this, right? Like I did, so I can put in two forward slashes. But once again, you can uncomment and comment in the same way. So that is gonna be tip number one, comment your code, put in good descriptions, remind yourself when you come back to it, what was I doing? Why did I write it this way? Tip number two, use explicit measures. So I am actually in this measure saying calculate the sum of sales amount minus the sum of total product cost. I'm writing out that entire thing. But if I had at any point in this Power BI report built a measure that was total sales that already encapsulated that logic of sum of sales amount, I could use that measure right here. So for example, if we want to use explicit measures, I can replace this code right here with total sales. And then I can do the same thing for the cost right here. So I can get rid of that and I would replace that with total cost. And now I'm using explicit measures. Now we could take this a step further. You're like, wait a minute, Mitchell, why wouldn't you have a measure called profit that is total sales minus total cost? Well, I do, right? I do. So we can make this even cleaner and even better by simply saying, hey, I already have a measure named profit. Let me use that inside of this expression. That's one of the huge benefits of building explicit measures in DAX is that you can reuse them in other measures, making the code a lot less verbose, a lot less lines of code, but also a lot more readable. Readability is huge. Now, obviously we still haven't solved the issue of having all this code here. So let me kind of put in tip number two here, right? Tip number two, use explicit measures. All right, now we're gonna be on tip number three. Tip number three is to format your code, right? 
format your code. Now I like to use shift plus enter. That's what I always use for formatting my code whenever I go from one line to the next because it automatically indents. So for example, if you look at the calculate statement here, you'll notice the very first expression or the very first parameter to calculate is an expression, which is going to be some form of an aggregation, right? If I hit shift enter just before the profit calculation, it doesn't just go down to the next line and go to the beginning of that line. It goes down to the next line and automatically indents it so that I know when I'm looking at this that that is the first parameter of calculate. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the next expression here, which is date add. All right, so right here where it says date add, I'll do shift enter, go down to the next line of code, and then I'll do the same thing for my year. And so it's getting a lot cleaner, right? This is a lot better. It's still a little confusing though for somebody who doesn't write code. So you bring somebody in, they're new to DAX, they don't write code, they're going to look at this and be like, okay, so you're returning the profit for what is this and what is this, right? They're still trying to dig through it. So what's another way to make this code cleaner? Use variables. I love variables. I use them all the time. Variables have a lot of different use cases. Um, the main use for me for using variables most of the time is readability, just cleaning up the code. But one of the big, big benefits of variables is being able to debug your code and uh, work through that. So that's another series I want to do. I have a list of different techniques that I use for debugging. Variables are at the very top of that list. So let me show you right here. If I come down, we're going to say, oh, I'm going to do this. By the way, here's another tip. This is free, no charge, don't tell anybody. If I come in here and I accidentally have these out of order and I wanted to move them around, watch this. So tip number four is going to be variables. Use variables. A lot of benefits to using variables. But watch this. If I hold down the Alt key and I go down or up, you can move lines of code in DAX. That's pretty cool. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't one of my five. That was just free. That was extra. All right, so use variables. Let's go ahead and define a couple of variables here. If I type in VAR and then I do prior year, I'm defining a variable that's going to be called prior year. All right, the value of that's going to be determined by this expression right here, date add. And then I'm going to bring in the date column from my date table. I'm going to go back one and then I'm going to go back one at the year level. So I'm using date add to go back one level. And then I'm going to write another variable here. This is going to be returning United States only. So we'll call this one United States equals, and then we're going to filter down our, whoops, our sales territory table here. There we go. Um, like that. And then where sales territory, ah, come on, let's do it again. There we go. Where sales territory country equals. Now, if you're looking at this right now, you're like, man, Mitchell, this is not cleaner code. There's a lot going on here. You're confusing me. I get it. Just hold on one second. Let me finish this up. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, and I'm zoomed in, so it's a little harder to see. We could actually format this if we wanted, just so we could see it. So let's do that. So I'm going to format this. I'm going to filter this table, and I'm going to filter this table with this expression right here, right? So this variable, United States, is only going to return the values from the sales territory table where the country equals United States. Perfect. Now, whenever you're done defining all of your variables, we're going to come in here and we're going to type in here return. And now we write our expression. And this is where it cleans up the code. Instead of typing down here, date add minus one year, that's a little bit confusing. What I do is I replace all of that code with prior year variable from above. And I do the same thing down here for the United States. So United States. And so now imagine a user, a business user comes in here and they look at this code or yourself. You come back to this code six months later, three months later, a year later, or you're trying to explain it to me in some virtual mentoring call. You're like, hey, Mitchell. Yeah, I know exactly what this is doing. It's returning profit for the prior year for the United States. Super easy to read. And then if we had problems with the United States, variable or the prior year or the calculation wasn't giving us exactly what we wanted, we could take this a step further and start debugging our variables. So those are going to be the first four steps. The fifth tip that I'm going to give you, and really there's two tips here. One is when you're writing your code, you can hold down the control button on your mouse or on your keyboard and then use the wheel on your mouse to kind of zoom in and zoom out just so you can see the code better and write better code. But really what I wanted to talk about for number five, so maybe there's more than five here, but what I really want to talk about was Spend time, invest time, right? Invest time in building your data model. The most complex DAX calculations I've ever had to write, ever had to write. 
have always come as a result of a data model that was not really well thought out. Now, I get it because Power BI is a self-service business intelligence tool. And so people who are loading up Power BI and pulling data in, you've never built a data model before in your life, right? And so I get that you're like, what are you talking about here, Mitchell? But take some time. There's a few different books out there. Uh, I didn't think about this in advance. I think it's Chris Adamson has a book called The Star Schema. I love that book. It's my favorite book on dimensional modeling, building a star schema. The first book I ever read, though, was by Ralph Kimball, and it was the Data Warehouse Toolkit. I like the star schema better because it's more user friendly. It's more uh, less technical, if you will. But both of them are awesome books. I still own both books and I recommend both of them. But there's also blogs out there. There's YouTube videos out there. My DAX boot camp that I do, the first half of that, you know, the first couple hours of the first day of my DAX boot camp, I actually dive right into data modeling. And I just give the students the fundamentals because once again, the most complex DAX that I've ever had to write, ever had to write for customers, helping them out, has always been a result of the data model not being as good. And the problem is when we jump on a call, you've already got 20 reports, right? You got all these reports, all these dashboards that are built off this existing data model and you need to solve this one problem. Well, I'm, you know, obviously I'm like, we really should rebuild this data model the right way, but then you'd have to rebuild all your reports and all your dashboards, that's problematic. So you're kind of stuck. If you don't invest the time right out of the gate to building a good data model in Power BI, it is very, very difficult to go back because who has time to go back and fix something that really wasn't done quite the way we maybe wanted to do it the first time. Fortunately, Power BI does have a lot of leniency. There is a lot of grace in Power BI. So even if you don't build a perfect data model, which there probably is no such thing, it's really more of an art than a science, uh, you can still get away with a lot in Power BI. All right, so that's my five tips. I hope you enjoyed them. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. And until I see you again, enjoy.